Wrestling is an industry built on emotion and often tries to manufacture it with storylines and angles, but very rarely does it come close to replicating what happens when real life situations are involved, whether that results in euphoria, despair, or something else. There have been many shows throughout wrestling history where the emotion created has been amplified due to things that are actually happening or have happened, as reality and the fantasy world of sports entertainment meet head on. So get out the tissues, folks, because you are about to cry harder than the last time you watched that Futurama episode about the dog. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are the 10 most emotional wrestling shows ever. Join us. Number 10. ECW One Night Stand while most of the roster at the time knew the death of ECW was inevitable, there was no opportunity to host a proper farewell, and for many of those who had been with the company through the good times and the bad, its 2001 closure offered no sense of, well, closure. But they got their chance with One Night Stand, a celebratory, cathartic night for those that felt a special connection with Extreme Championship Wrestling. Bringing back most of the old gang for the occasion, One Night Stand was like a supercharged greatest hits event where many in attendance were visibly emotional. It was relatively recent nostalgia, but it was pitched exactly right and proved an opportunity to close that particular chapter of wrestling history. In theory, anyway. Highlights included the injured Rob Van Dam's rousing shoot promo, a choked up Paul Heyman addressing the crowd, the Sandman making his iconic entrance, complete with the Metallica score, Masato Tanaka and Mike Awesome going one more round and tearing the bingo hall down, and, well, there were lots of others too. The first One Night Stand featured an energy and passion you simply cannot manufacture and made it stand out from any other show from the era. Number 9. The Final WCW Nitro while the ECW locker room weren't entirely sure just when the end was going to come, the men and women of WCW sure did, even if they weren't given too much prior notice after being informed that the company was to be purchased by WWE. So on March 26, 2001, WCW held its last ever show, which was a live episode of Monday Nitro, the program that once beat WWE Raw in the ratings for 83 consecutive weeks. Much of the show was business as usual, but there were some loose ends to tie up, like making sure Booker T beat Scott Steiner for the WCW title before his planned jump to WWE. Everyone on the show understandably looked a little shell-shocked, from announcer Tony Schiavone, who relayed the gravity of the situation to fans at home, to Diamond Dallas Page, who sincerely thanked the fans via video message. Most people remember the show for the simulcast and storyline revelation that Shane, not Vince, actually controlled WCW, but the true main event was really Sting and Ric Flair, two of WCW's stalwarts locking up one last time. Number 8. The WWE Hall of Fame 2014 Ceremony The Hall of Fame ceremony is typically a night of intense emotion, regardless of who is in the class that's being inducted on any given year. 2014 was more poignant than most, however, because it saw the inductions of a beloved member of the WWE family, as well as a man who many thought would never appear in WWE again, and two men who most assumed wouldn't even be alive to see their own inductions. Paul Bearer, The Ultimate Warrior, Jake Roberts, and Scott Hall as Razor Ramon were all deserved inductees, but the context of their inductions really added gravitas to the occasion. Bearer was posthumously inducted by Kane and represented by his two sons, while The Undertaker popped up in character to pay his respects. Warrior and WWE managed to put their bad blood behind them to give one of WWE's most memorable stars his moment, which he shared with his two young daughters. The moment was given added significance when he shockingly passed away just days later. And the bad guy and the snake cleaned up and avoided being wrestling's next tragedies in order to get their due. Number 7. WrestleMania 30 The night after the 2014 Hall of Fame induction ceremony was also a very emotional one. WrestleMania 30 represented something of a wrestling roller coaster, treating fans to some dizzying highs and devastating lows. Of the highs, none were higher than Daniel Bryan, the people's champion and a man who found himself in the position he was in thanks in large part to audience persistence, first beating Triple H in the opener and then making Batista tap out in a triple threat match also featuring Randy Orton to win the WWE Heavyweight title. In the heartwarming post-match scene, D. Bry took the time to embrace Brace Connor the Crusher, the terminally ill eight-year-old fan who had captured the heart of the man he idolized and, just talking about it, I feel as though my non-existent allergies are acting up. 
Connor would pass away less than three weeks later. Though not comparable to that very real tragedy, the ending of The Undertaker's WrestleMania winning streak at the hands of Brock Lesnar had many fans feeling a sudden sense of loss. After the most infamous result in wrestling history, the plethora of different reactions showed the true range of emotions that fans inside the Superdome were feeling, from sadness and confusion to shock and anger. Number 6. Ric Flair's Farewell the night after he had his last ever WWE match was the Ric Flair Show, as WWE gave the Hall of Famer a considerable chunk of time to make his farewell address. Building up to the address, WWE played clips of some of the best moments from Flair's long and illustrious career, as well as messages from the likes of Dusty Rhodes. The dirtiest player in the game gave a typically impassioned speech and looked set to leave before Triple H made his entrance and informed him that he and many others wanted to pay their respects to him before he goes. Following that, everyone from Michaels and Ricky Steamboat to the Four Horsemen and Batista came out to give him a hug and a kind word. And then to cap it all off, the locker room emptied and gave him a standing ovation as the fans chanted, Thank you, Rick. After the show went off the air, Vince McMahon and The Undertaker also emerged to join the heartfelt festivities, leaving the Nate a blubbering mess. I mean, I know the bloke cries at car commercials, but this was different. Number 5. The Post 9-11 Smackdown Sticking to the old maxim, the show must go on, WWE taped Smackdown on September 13th, 2001, just two days after the horror of 9-11. The first mass gathering of any kind in the United States since the attacks took place, WWE abandoned storylines for the evening and put on a show in Houston, Texas in a bid to take the nation's mind off the tragedy. It began with Vince McMahon addressing the audience before he joined every member of the WWE roster, as well as referees, crew, and office personnel on the stage as Lillian Garcia delivered a stirring rendition of the Star Spangled Banner, setting the tone for what was to come. Throughout the evening, many WWE superstars gave their thoughts about what had happened and sent out messages of defiance and hope to those watching at home, as well as their prayers to the victims and those directly affected. In an unprecedented situation, WWE attempted to do what they do best and offer a bit of respite in incredibly trying times, while also showing another, more human side of their superstars. Fittingly, American hero Kurt Angle beats Rhino and led the audience in chants of USA. Number 4. The Brody Lee Celebration of Life The death of Jonathan Brody Lee Huber completely stunned the wrestling world. Brody was young, had wrestled on television just a few months beforehand, and nobody outside of a small circle knew about his illness or the severity of it. There was an immediate outpouring of grief for a devoted family man who was beloved by many, and AEW, the organization that employed him at the time of his passing, decided to dedicate the December 30th, 2020 episode of Dynamite to him, calling it the Brody Lee Celebration of Life. The matches, as usual on shows like this, were largely inconsequential, but did feature all the members of the Dark Order stable that Lee was the leader of and were uplifting in their way. It was the moments that really tugged on the heartstrings here, whether it was the video testimonials from his colleagues, the incredible tribute video, or Tony Khan awarding Brody's son the TNT title belt and naming him TNT Champion for Life. An exceptionally classy tribute to a talented performer who was, by all accounts, a truly great guy. Number 3. Roman's Revelation Opening the October 22nd, 2018 episode of Raw, Roman Reigns revealed that leukemia, which he had been initially diagnosed with in 2008, had returned. Relinquishing the Universal title, Reigns dropped character and addressed the audience as Joe. Explaining his history with the disease, he thanked the fans for their support, letting them know that he was going home to focus on his health and family and that he would be back soon. He was then met by Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins of The Shield, the three men emotionally hugging at the top of the ramp. Even the biggest big dog detractor, of course, couldn't help but wish the man well. Joe's speech was optimistic in nature, and it helped turn what could have been an incredibly sad moment into something of a triumphant one, but it was still tough to listen to, knowing how serious the situation was. At the end of the show, things became emotional in a different storyline way, when the lunatic fringe turned on the architect just moments after the pair won the tag team titles. In an era where it had become hard to surprise a somewhat jaded audience, the the moment he hit Dirty Deeds took all the air out of the arena as there were notable gasps at the sight of the unexpected attack. Number 2. The Eddie Guerrero Tribute Show 
Eddie Guerrero's tragic passing at the age of 38 was something that nobody saw coming, especially since he had worked so hard to turn his life around and beat the demons that threatened to take it from him years earlier. Latino Heat was due to work later that night at a combined Raw and SmackDown television taping, meaning the entire roster was there when the news broke. Faced once again with a big decision, Vince McMahon decided to press on with two tribute shows after speaking with Eddie's nephew Chavo, who assured the boss that this is what his uncle would have wanted. The pain and sadness was evident on everyone's face during the opening 10 bell salute, with many of Eddie's nearest and dearest openly weeping, most notably his friend Chris Benoit, who was shaking uncontrollably. During the course of the Raw and SmackDown episodes, many people gave emotional testimonials and shared their fond memories of Guerrero, while some of the matches presented had a very special meaning to them. Chavo went over Eddie's old nemesis JBL with the frog splash, while Benoit pinned Triple H before being joined in the ring by the third amigo, Dean Malenko, at the close of the show. Number 1. Raw is Owen whether WWE did the right thing in continuing the show after Owen Hart's tragic accident at Over the Edge is, at the very least, highly debatable. The next night on Raw, however, WWE did everything they could to honor Owen with an emotional tribute show. Stories and rivalries were put aside for the evening, and every performer was given the option of whether or not they wanted to wrestle. It began with a 10-bell salute, with the roster gathered on the ramp, followed by a tribute video narrated by Vince McMahon. Throughout the show, wrestlers spoke about Owen and what he meant to them. Particularly difficult viewing was Owen's tag partner Jeff Jarrett, who was quite clearly devastated just 24 hours removed from seeing his best friend pass away. What shone through while watching everyone say their bit was just what a good person Owen Hart was, and how much he cared about his family, particularly his wife and children, above everything else. The show closed with Steve Austin, a man who had previously had issues with Owen after their SummerSlam 1997 match went wrong, toasting the rocket as the show went off the air with an in-memory-of graphic. There's those damn allergies again. 